Hello and welcome to another segment of Heal Thyself Benefits of Holistic Living. I'm Mia Signs, your host, and with me in this segment is Suzanne McQueen. Now this is really interesting. I love women who work with women regarding their cycles and their rhythm. It's really, really essence important for us to know exactly who we are and how we work and also have the ability to utilize somebody to help us. What's really cool about Suzanne is that she helps women tap into their cycles. And it really is interesting to understand our patterns. And she works with women all over the world. And I love how she talks about um, having a a cycle, a four-season cycle within a month. So welcome to the show, Suzanne. Thanks, Mia. So great to be here today. It's wonderful for you to be here. Thank you. Will you share with us a bit about um, how you found and discovered and how this impacted your life, your work, and then we're going to get into some questions and answers. Great. You know, I was just having coffee with a friend yesterday who said, you know, gosh, it was, it's so great that you figured this thing out, that you spent all this time researching it and that you, you know, uh, that you were able to pull together this system. And I said, that is not at all what happened. Um, that, that's, you know, that, that is just simply not the case. Hormones were not my background. They weren't my interest. They weren't anything that I ever thought uh, made me tick. And I didn't like the reputation that, you know, that we have as, as women have always had and currently still have around our hormones, um, that we're crazy or we can't be understood or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. We can't, we surely can't get a woman into the presidency because she may push the button during the wrong time or, you know, no, it's all so absurd. And so I, I really stayed away from it too. Nobody really wants to talk about that. But what ended up, what ended up happening, Mia, is that um, back in the late 90s, I had a large business, a large business for me. I had 30 employees, and, and uh, I was in the day spa industry, so I was in the healing industry and all of that. And um, I just um, uh, noticed some things about um, just how I was feeling and all that that, that had me um, really making the decision to track my cycle, not for fertility or contraception purposes. And I didn't have the, I didn't have the background at that time for fertility awareness method or any of that. I just decided to just make some notes every day. And that was kind of it. But I was so busy that I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't making a big deal out of it. I wasn't even focused on it all that much. I just decided to make notes and go on with my day. I mean, it would take me about a minute, you know, what the day was like, how I was feeling, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, it was a couple of months later that I went home on a lunch break and I was looking over my day planner. You know, we didn't have cell phones and stuff then, you know, or day planners and, and um, looking over that and, and looking at my notes and just standing there eating a sandwich. And I wasn't thinking a thing about it. Um, the reason why I had decided to track though, is that I, I just thought maybe I can just get a few insights. Let's see if I can just sort of see a, a pattern or something. I just didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But what ended up happening is I just had uh, what I would call uh, uh, an epiphany, you know, a, a real awakening. I mean, it was just one of those visions that, and I do get stuff. I mean, over the years, I have gotten um, uh, many sort of what people call downloads and that kind of thing. I just didn't recognize it all that much um, until years later. But this particular one, it was so enormous that I just saw these four distinct phases. I mean, I saw the words fall, winter, spring, and summer surface to my day planner. I mean, that's not something that other people even believe or, you know, or have ever experienced anything like it. And, and I hadn't experienced anything like this, but it was just so enormous. But bigger than that, I saw what these four phases really meant. I saw what they meant for me. I saw how they went. I saw what the strengths and weaknesses were of each phase, what kind of tools I needed to bring in for each of those phases in order to just find balance and comfort. And I saw how for, I saw how this was the missing link to our empowerment as women, how big this problem is, because this is our piece of vulnerability. This is the piece that I don't care if you're a, a, um, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. If you're a female, um, most likely you have or have had a lot of, uh, even in the past, um, feelings of real vulnerability around the cycle cycling or not, or maybe it's early hysterectomy or, or menopause, whatever it is, it's a piece that, that we haven't learned to love uh, because we haven't learned anything great about it. Mm-hmm. And all we hear is negativity. We feel the negativity. We have it coming at us, that kind of thing. And um, so it was something anyway that I decided to put into practice. 
from from right then I decided okay you know what day am I on day 17 or something like that that means I'm in spring week three spring and then next week I'll be in summer so I mapped it out my day planner and then I woke up every morning and I thought okay what day am I on which is not something I'd ever done before you know I wouldn't have been able to tell you what day I was on except you know I'd mark my calendar with a period you know something like that but um uh, and, and then I would, I would know what that day meant. And I would proceed throughout the day making decisions around that because I really found that if I was procrastinating, but I knew that this was a phase that this was a good time for getting this done, I thought, nope, do not just get this done. Get this done today because I'm not going to feel like it in a few days or next week. And I found uh, after about two months of this, I just couldn't believe it. The system was so incredibly accurate that I started I just did that from then on out and I practiced it for seven years before I ever decided to write about it. Mm -hmm. And I only decided to write about it because a guy friend of mine at a class reunion who was being really cynical about the cycle <laughs> um, and I explained my system to him got so excited about it. He just got it. He said, I get that for the first time and you really have to write about this. I had been writing a business series and, and so I switched and started. I knew that this was that's awesome. Bigger. Yeah. You know, it's really pretty marvelous is when we do fall in love with our cycle. I'm at the age where um, perimenopause should be setting in. And um, unfortunately for me, I'm older than when it normally sets in. But I've learned to love and embrace and not fear it. And I've been tracking my cycle. I love that you said this. I've been tracking my cycle for several years now. I was talking to my mom recently. She's, I think, 75 now. And she was, I was saying something like, something about my cycle and she's, and about tracking it. And she said, well, I still have my cycle. And I said, do you have it every 28 days still? And she said, I don't know because I don't know. And I said, well, I keep track of mine. She goes, you keep track of yours. <laughs> I said, yes, it was recommended after my children so that I know not to get pregnant again. Right. <laughs> and so ever since then, I've been tracking my cycle. But the thing that I think is so cool that, you're, that you brought up is loving the aspect of the seasons with it. It's like same with the moon. You know, it's the whole concept, the feminine essence that is just dynamic. Right on, girl. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Thank you. What I discovered is this thing is so phenomenal. I mean, it's just so big, it's so powerful, it's so exciting that um, uh, I can see why maybe it got squashed, um, you know, centuries ago and or, you know, hundreds, you know um, thousands of years ago. I mean, you know, over time, depending on where, where people lived, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it became uh, more and more oppressed. But it is very powerful, this navigational system within us. Mm -hmm. And I just, I find it to be very exciting. What are some ways and why, I mean, we've talked about how exciting it is, but what are, what are some reasons why women need to track these seasons within the month? Well, um, really because um, we are all rhythmic beings. And this, what I've really ended up discovering is that this is no different than our 24-hour circadian rhythm. So we have this 24-hour rhythm um, where we actually, uh, well, pretty much every rhythm in the universe has something that looks like these four phases. There's a resting phase, a building phase, an expressing phase, and a deconstructing phase, and back to rest. You know, what goes up must come down kind of yes. thing. And so in that 24-hour circadian rhythm, um, body clock, men and women both have this, um, this resting phase. We sleep at night. We get up in the morning and everything starts, you know, um, starts gearing up. Um, everything starts coming online in our bodies, you know, and that kind of thing. At some point during the day, so that's the building phase. Um, some point during the day we hit our stride and that's the expression phase. I mean, we're just on fire and we're going and we're doing our thing. And then at some point we get tired and we start to tank and that's our, our uh, problem solving phase, our processing phase, um, deconstructing phase. And then it's back to rest. In the 24 hours, we may do that two or three times if we take a nap or, you know, that kind of thing. But either way, we have those four phases. And throughout the day, we are making rhythmic decisions around that. What we have for breakfast might not be what we have for lunch. Um, when we have coffee is might be a certain time. When our best creative time is, our best time to write or, you know, do a video or, you know, whatever it is, we're kind of making rhythmic, rhythmic decisions and we're not really paying attention to that. Um, 
through the four seasons, we are making rhythmic decisions for our comfort all the time. I mean, as human beings, we have this level system within us that is always trying to create balance for survival. We want to be comfortable. So if it's, um, uh, you know, pretty much every day, everyone that I know is determining what, what's the temperature I mean, is it cold outside and I'm going to be going, so what am I putting? If it's cold, then the way that we make a rhythmic decision for our comfort is we, we get a jacket mm -hmm. and we put the coat on and we go. Mm -hmm. That's a rhythmic decision. That's not something crazy. It would be crazier to not make the rhythmic decision, you know. But like this 24-hour circadian rhythm, we women also have these same four phases in a month's time. Mm -hmm. So I call that the 28-day female body clock mm -hmm. because we have – a resting phase, a building phase, an expressing phase, and a deconstructing phase, and back to the rest. And we haven't learned how to choose rhythmically in order to have balance and comfort. And that's kind of a crime in a way. It's really a basic function, like eating, you know, or, or again, sleeping that we've, we've needed to um, have known. And that's why, we, to me, that's why so much of the time, we're not feeling like we're in alignment with, with what's happening. And so, um, uh, and the, really the bottom line is the reason why we've got this 28-day body clock is because as women, you know, basically we're construction zones. I mean, you know, we, um, our reproductive cycle is all about construction. It's just all about building a uterine nest, a, a uterine lining in order to prepare for a pregnancy. And if no pregnancy happens, we've got to take it back down. And then it gets washed out in the form of blood. That's kind of it. So we do go through that resting with, with, a, um, with that purging, the, the period time. We do build the uterine nest. That's a building. We do ovulate and, and hang out and wait to see if the body is pregnant. That's the expressing phase. And then we, uh, body figures out it's not pregnant. Everything's got to come back down. That's the declining. And then we're back to rest again. So when we know what the strengths and weaknesses are, when we know what the climate is, what we know what the energies are of each of those phases, and they're, they're different, then we know what tools to bring in for balance. We know if we, if we need to wear a coat that day or whether we need to wear shorts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like that, you know, as an analogy with the, with the seasons. Um, but it's very empowering. And if we don't understand which phase we're in, we're uncomfortable and we don't know why. And the world tells us we're just crazy. Right. But you know what's really amazing? And listening to you talk about how our body creates and builds us to produce a baby, a child, right. another human form, it's really magnificent. This is what I love about this kind of overall, not just women. Well, yes, okay, <laughs> women thing. This it's, part. Exactly. But it's also, it, it lends us into every other aspect of our rhythmic style within us, our confidence, our sexiness. We are magnificent creatures. And if people gave themselves 10% credit for absolutely how magnificent we are, the world would be totally different. Each woman would be on fire. I mean, we are just totally. awesome. And yeah. men are beautiful too. And men apparently would have a rhythmic cycle too of their own. Yes. But here's the thing is that, you know, we've been, it, it's been made out that women are the, the, the ones that are hard to understand, but really ours is very easy to understand because we have these markers. I mean, we have a period or we ovulate or, um, you know, we are lunar rhythmic. You can follow the, the moon and see exactly what we used to cycle by, you know, uh, before artificial lighting. With men, their rhythm, that's not easy to figure out. And, and researchers are just really, they, they kind of keep coming up with different things right now. I've talked to, um, over the years, a few different experts, and they kind of come up with a couple of different things. So, I think that the way for the men to find their rhythm is to first learn the female rhythm. And because mm. all of us, all humans are born of, are baptized into this world through women. Mm. And so everyone's getting bathed in the essence of the female. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, why not first then go to the women to really learn about rhythm, mm -hmm. learn the female rhythm, and then you start seeing your own. Um, I was told by some researchers a few years ago that, uh, um, that men follow those same four phases, not only in a 24 hour, but in a year's time. So they would follow the sun seasons hmm. um, in three month phases, not necessarily aligned with the actual season, but they'd have their own. So a three month phase of arresting more ideas, mm -hmm. uh, um, ideas coming in the next three months, acting on those ideas, mm -hmm. the next three months, 
really going with those ideas. It might be a business. It might be a relationship. And then the next three months would be up. Crap, you know, that's not working and problem solving, you know. That's so crazy because out of all the men that I've known, you know, we all know men, brothers, sis, you know, brothers, cousins, uncles, fathers, um, boyfriends. Out of one, I dated someone with exactly what you're talking about. Oh. And I thought it was um, – I thought it was a type of depression. <laughs> uh -huh, right. And, and when we know, when we know what it is, then we can roll with it better. And we know it's a phase and we know what we need to do to, to, right. um, to help ourselves with that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Now I want yeah. to bring this up to him, you know, just yeah. very, very, very cool. Just, you know, we're still friends. And so to, you know, to help him out, maybe I will down the road. So, well, yeah. I wanted to ask you about um, a lot of women align their bodies with other women. Uh -huh. you know, our close friends, we have the same cycles. Right. Or some of us align to the moon and then others align to us. Mm -hmm. Why is not every single woman aligned to the moon? And can you share a little bit about that with us? I'm not sure that anybody really knows the answer to that right now. Um, the, um, from what I know, from what I've researched myself, is that first of all, the idea of women cycling together, they live together and they start cycling together. Um, everything that I've read, there's been such a big debate about that, whether that's actually accurate, um, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But I'll tell you, when you ask the women, when you forget the research or anything else, when you just ask the women, you'll find it's true. Yeah. You know, and I think that speaks louder than anything. I think it has to do with, I think it's a lot of, I mean, first of all, our bodies and our minds are so amazing anyway. I mean, you know, I mean, we, what our minds are capable is, is, of is just something we can't fathom right now. But I know that, that our bodies are designed to do amazing things. So the fact that we may start um, cycling with another woman, from what I understand, way back before artificial lighting. Now, before artificial lighting has kind of come in and, and screwed up our signals, our internal signals. So we're not as affected by the light of the moon anymore mm -hmm. as the women who used to, um, who used to, you know, um, have that direct moonlight. And it is said that women used to start their periods on or around the new moon, ovulate, birth their babies on or around the full moon. And some women were opposite from that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really say how accurate that is because I just have not been able to find that information. But I do know that Christiane Northrup talked about that they have been able to re, um, to, to, um, um, to, what do you call it? Um, to, to do that again in the laboratory, you know, to, to, to actually recreate that. Um, but the thing that I also read that was really interesting and makes a lot of sense to me is it's really a survival technique. So in other words, when women were cycling together by the moon, if they were birthing their babies all around the same time, if a woman died in childbirth, there'd be another woman there to nurse her baby and care for her. You know, we're talking super primal things yes. here and this whole cycle of ours is so primal mm -hmm. and uh and it's going on underneath the surface with or without us this whole thing is happening you know it's it's so crazy good i i just makes me smile it just is it's brilliant now you talked about our navigational system within ourselves is there more that you'd like to add to that there is um i think that what i wanted to add is that even though this whole um, reproduction cycle. Um, ultimately, uh, you know, what, what's obvious to us is that this is about birthing children, birthing babies. Mm -hmm. However, I've discovered um, that it's not just about that. This is about creation. This is about creating projects. This is about leading nations. This is about being well-rounded with what I call the womb wisdom. When we understand how to find balance in each of those energies, we are really um, learning how to navigate life and how to build our lives and how to problem solve. A lot of times we go through these phases, but we get to the problem solving phase or the deconstructing phase and everybody bails. doesn't matter if it's a business or if it's a relationship, especially mm -hmm. nobody wants to deal with the problems but when we start understanding and in in our cycles we call this week pms and i get rid of that idea altogether except for the women who are tragically suffering yeah. um, but otherwise this is something that we can totally learn how to navigate and actually get kind of excited about it mm -hmm. you know it's a real ceremonial time so um 
when we learn how to go through these phases of this womb wisdom, we are building our lives and we are, are making optimal decisions about everything. And we're, we're teaching um, everyone around us about this. But it's really about creating everything. It's creating our families, creating our circles, creating our businesses. Um, yes, and birthing children, but not everybody can, can birth a child. I've got three kids, you know, and I feel very fortunate about that. But not all women are able to... to um, conceive. And that doesn't mean that they're not super powerful. They're exactly. super powerful, they're mm -hmm. super rhythmic, mm -hmm. and they can still create in on other levels. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're still mothering the world in mm -hmm. some way or another. And um, I, I think it's all kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. We just happen to be able to point to the physical, you know, um, uh, birthing of an actual child. But I think it's representative of all of it. And I think it's meant to be all of it. Right. Right. It's pretty fantastic. It really is. And to and for us to come together as sisters and honor each other on all aspects like that is, I think it's the most beautiful thing about humanity is the, is the sisterhood that we have when we're not jealous and not fearful and not angry and mm -hmm. we're full of love. We come together to support and to nurture. Remember mm -hmm. the the red tents mm -hmm. where the women would go to be taken care of by the younger ones while they were on their menstrual cycle. Yeah. When you were first talking, I thought, um, when we first started the interview, I thought about that and I thought, I wonder if women really, really embrace that, not just so much of the, or it became part of their culture, part of their routine, but even back then, they were more or less pushed away for the blood mm -hmm. and so I think women over time have taken on the cycle um, DNA wise from genetically from women to women to women for thousands upon thousands of years that it's almost it was a curse you know it was like the Adam or the Eve curse right um, which isn't necessary when you look at it as the most incredible thing and you honor it and you honor your sisters with it and you support each other. We can get from, I used to have the most miserable cycles and do I still have them on occasion? I guess I do, but for the most part, it's very blissful. So mm -hmm. I think that when we literally understand and change our whole system, you know, the way of thinking, believing, we're changing our cellular system about it, that it, it can change, especially for those who, who suffer. Do know that you can have some peace and freedom. You know, you have to change your whole concept of it, actually. Even. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I mean, I, I just really think that um, – as as you as you talk about it, it occurs to me that it's our responsibility to change this now that we know more and change it for our future, um, change it for the girls now, change it for future girls. But but that means also changing it for the men, changing it for everybody, changing it for you know it really is about changing the paradigm and shifting up that dynamic of how we view everything because when we begin to respect this aspect, we begin to respect other things that we think of as female in our world, primarily the environment. Mm -hmm. um, homelessness and hunger, which is a home and hearth issue. You know, um, those aren't things that, uh, healthcare, those aren't things, those are things that, that when you are coming from a patriarchal point of view, you don't, you just don't really give a rip about, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, people might say they do, but, but the proof is in what we actually um, what we are actually caring for. How is the world turning out? We're still into war big time. Um, we haven't taken care of our environment well at all, and now we're trying to backpedal and catch up as, as well as possible. You know, is it possible? We don't know. But, um, you know, I think that when we start really getting this piece and really truly respecting the female essence, mm -hmm. we're going to start respecting all of those other things that we think of as female. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And also, um, why is it important for men to understand us and our system? Well, first of all, they benefit greatly. I mean, you know, again, it was a guy who, who encouraged me to write this book. And the reason why he did is because he finally understood the rhythmic sex drive of his mm. wife. Mm. And so when I talk with men about it, um, this is what I find. I mean, this is the way that they can first relate to it. I mean, somebody else might say, oh, why do you have to go there with it? Why does that, you know, well, the thing is, is that 
men do see this rhythm. They just don't know what to make of it. They, they don't, you know, because we don't understand it either. You know, we don't know what to make of it. So we haven't taught them. Um, there are some guys who will just, they won't ever understand because they don't want to. Right. But, I find, but I find that so many men, I find that the majority of, my, of the men I talk to are really interested in this. They want to know and they do want to be supportive because they do want to co-create the kind of relationship that they've always wanted as well. Um, they just have, so when, when, when I sort of enter the conversation and having it be about a rhythmic sex drive, I mean, they're just like all ears, right? Yes. <laughs> they, just, they just want to know. And so I get men showing up to these workshops they, and they're just thanking me afterwards saying, you know, we don't know anything. I said, well, none of us know anything. And we're just yeah. finally kind of pulling it back together. But, but what happens is that, um, you know, the men, I, I simply believe that the men follow the sun, we follow the moon. Mm -hmm. They have a, a steady or burn. Um, and, you know, and we, we follow the, we're, we're more uh, quickly rhythmic throughout mm -hmm. the month. And, and that's the way that our sex drive goes because this is a, because the reproduction cycle ultimately about is about creation and it's about sex. So mm -hmm. there we have it. It's very cool and it's beautiful. And I love it when couples come together to understand this and to oh. understand, like you said, the rhythmic sex drive. People used to think that women didn't like sex. Right. Oh, my God. Our yeah. bodies ache for it. It yearns yes. for it depending right. on the time of month mm -hmm. or even just who we are because we understand ourselves. So right. it's so important. And I'm finding that it's so important even into our 50s, 60s and beyond, I've heard. It, it just goes. It keeps going. And, um, you know, I'm 57. And so I know that, you know, things are alive and well. And, and I've got... Um, you know, friends in their 80s who, and it's alive and well. And, you know, it's also very much a mental game. If you're understanding kind of where you're at, I mean, you know, you might understand that your body doesn't look like it did when it was 20 and it may not even function the same way that it did when it was 20. Yeah. But, you know, our ability to attract and, and connect and actually have romance and have sex is, you know, it can, can go on and on. But we really have to wrap our minds around um, – what it is we prefer during these certain phases. I mean, I think that we're sexual throughout the entire month. It's just that what we desire is different in those four different phases. And when the guys get that part also, uh -huh. um, when, when they realize, you know, how they can participate in that and they can't just jump in at one particular time and then bail out and, you know, like this, yeah. is, a, this is a dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful courtship. Yeah. It's a beautiful courtship and it's fun. You know, it's yeah. really fun and sweet. And then you, and you become closer. Exactly. Yeah. So you have a free gift for us. You want to share it? I do. I do. I actually have two free gifts because <laughs> I just sort of couldn't decide. Right now, um, I had just started this and uh, I, I'm just doing a giveaway uh, that I haven't been advertising except just to my list um, for these 13 archetype cards. They come into your inbox for 13 days in a row. Wow. And what they are is that in these four phases, I have three archetypes each that help the women walk through and sort of identify what they're feeling. So the first archetype is, a, is the lounging queen. It's important to rest and, and um, really just luxuriate during this time. And then the visionary comes in and then the artist. So anyway, I've got all these archetypes. So I made these really beautiful, what I call cards, but they're really digital. They go into your inbox and eventually I'll expand those. But for right now, I've got those um, 13 um, 13 archetypes, 13 days. And if they go to the link that you'll be posting, uh, all they have to do is just sign up for it. There's no strings awesome. attached, no, yeah. no nothing, right. no big sales pitch around it or anything like that. It's but very cool. In fact, I want that. <laughs> well, you know, everybody's loving them. I, I kind of, like I said, I haven't advertised it um, yet. They're, they're brand new and I just put them out to my list because I just kind of wanted to check it out and see how it was going. I made a few typos, had to fix those, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, uh, oh, I've gotten such great feedback. Everybody loves them. They said they didn't want them to stop. And so Wonderful. that's been fun. And the other thing that I have um, for your listeners is I thought that I would give them a free ebook. Mm. So if they go to my website, um, which I don't know, I might need to send that to you, but it's 4S4W, like four seasons, mm -hmm. four weeks, 4S4W. Okay. It'll um, be on in and, the credits. Okay. Yeah. And if they put, um, if they go to the, shopping cart and yes. they click on the ebook. Mm -hmm. So for the ebook, 
they need to put in the coupon code MIA. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, we'll put that in the daily and they'll, email. And they'll get it for free. We'll yeah. write that down. We'll put that in the email. That's awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this has been so lovely to have you on. Would you like to give us one last juicy bit of insight from your heart? Oh, gosh, from my heart, I would just say, you know, you don't have women, you do not have mood swings. You're lunar rhythmic. Mm -hmm. And just like getting out into the ocean, at first, you're going to, you know, you might not know how to swim, but uh, you get in there and you start feeling it a little bit. You look out, you see which way the swells are coming. You start paying attention. You see if there's a little wave or a big wave coming your way. Just keep going on out in there. And pretty soon, you're going to start feeling really comfortable in it. And you'll understand where you're at and what you need to do. Um, awesome. So that would be it. I, I just, uh, I, I look forward to um, being in circle with, uh, any or all of you at some point in the future and Mia especially you I would love thank to you, see honey. you again yeah. yes me too thank yeah. you so much it was really a pleasure to have you on thank you really was. really yeah. fun being here thank you thank you yeah and thank you all for joining us and we'll see you in another segment bye <laughs>